Hello and welcome to News Click. I'm Paranjay Goha Thakurta and for the next 15 minutes or thereabouts, I'm going to look at the proliferation of fake news, misinformation, disinformation, especially after what happened after Pulwama. And I'm extremely happy to have here with me in the studio of News Click, a person who I believe has been at the forefront of countering disinformation and misinformation on the internet, on the social media. A person who I greatly admire. I mean, I'm plugging him right here and now on this program. Thank you very much, Pratik Sinha, for coming here. Pratik Sinha, for the benefit of our viewers, is the founder editor of Alt News, which is an Ahmedabad-based fact-checking portal at the ripe young age of 36, you've uh, studied electronics engineering, been a software engineer, studied in Bangalore, worked in the United States, Vietnam, India, and earlier uh, was one of the moving forces behind the truth of Gujarat website. Pratik, post Pulwama, we've seen this hyperventilation, this jingoism being fueled in the in the social media, on the net. And yes, of course, those who support Mr. Narendra Modi, the Bharatiya Janata Party, the current government have been at the forefront of it. How much of what has been disseminated is false, fake, aimed at incitement, promoting hatred? There's a lot of it. Um, the, the propaganda has been multifold. You know, it has had many objectives. Number one, uh, the first figure that was bandied about was this figure of 300 uh, terrorists that have been killed by the IF strike. This was, you know, Pulwama happened, then Indian Air Force, into, uh, you know, went into the battle. To sources. Uh, and it has been uh, credited to sources. Now, as soon as that happened, what happened was that multiple pictures of dead bodies started circulating on social media claiming that these are the people who have been killed by the IAF strike. And we recently did a detailed story of about 12 pictures, 11 to 12 pictures, where we showed how each one of these pictures are you know, either a previous bomb blast somewhere else or, or an earthquake, you know, different kind of things which were put together and circulated claiming that you know, this, is the, um, this is the amount of destruction that the uh, Indian Air Force has had. Now, I'm not going, in, going to go into details as to what happened, what did not happen. That is, yeah, people can always go to the Alt News website yeah. and check out the details. Yes, but uh, but the sort of spreading pictures of bodies has been a very very important element yes. of this kind of uh, whipping up jingoism. Just not only whipping up jingoism. See, what happens is that. Uh, you know, in a recent, for example, in an interview of a mother of a slain CRPF soldier, uh, the very day when the IF strike happened, she's like, you know, you, uh, our, the dead bodies of our sons were taken around everywhere. I don't see a single dead body of a terrorist. You know, that is what she said uh, in an interview to a news channel. So that is what everybody thinks first. When you claim a number of 300, a, a government can possibly hide four, five, six, ten bodies. But how, in, in the age of front-facing cameras, how do you hide 300 bodies in broad daylight, right? So, so the BJP president, Amit Shah, has uh, publicly claimed that there were 250 people. 250. So, so now there has to be at least people want to see evidence. Okay, and that is where misinformation comes into picture. That you, instead of showing actual evidence, you produce evidence. So this is essentially, uh, you know, for example, Gujarat Samachar. I come from Ahmedabad, and Gujarat Samachar had a headline. Uh, which and was, Gujarat Samachar is the leading Gujarati newspaper. Yes. Yes. Uh, in 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 the state of Gujarat. Yes. And Gujarat Samachar had a headline which roughly translate to that. Uh, you know, Narendra Modi has blown off three fifty terrorists. That and the big bold headline and and Gujarat Samachar's headline makes a huge difference in now. But again, there are no pictures. There's no evidence to show that, and that is where this comes into picture. That you know you can't show evidence, but you can show all. You can circulate these fake pictures over and over and over again. And they uh, now uh, BJP has this massive network of WhatsApp groups. No, you know, in fact, what we are what we've seen in recent days and recent weeks appears to many 
to be a precursor of what we're going to see in the coming weeks in the run-up to the elections. And we've heard of literally hundreds of thousands of the so-called WhatsApp army of the Bharti Janata Party and the Sangh Parivar. And they seem to be, uh, I mean, my sources within the Bharti Janata Party tell me that that is what the focus is about. They are going to be the leading disseminators of information, the propagandists, the campaigners on behalf of the ruling party. That is expected. Uh, and if you go back to Amit Shah's speech a few months ago, where he himself admitted that they have a network which can make anything go viral. In fact, he gave an example of how... Akhilesh Yadav slapping yes, yes, his and, father, which was fake. Yes, which was fake and that went viral. So they already have that network in place and it's, it's, been, it's been a long time. But, but one also needs to know how it is being done professionally. It's not just about being the network. At, at the end of the day, you have to produce content which is believable enough. The messaging has to be believable enough. So uh, presently there are multiple Facebook pages. Uh, for example, there's a Facebook page called Fir Ekbar Modi Sarkar. Okay. Uh, now, just before these three elections, and you'll see the content that is being produced, it's professional. You, you can look at, you look, you look at the graphics, you look at the video, you know that it is not just some random dude sitting and producing this. There, there's a team which is doing this. All organized. Yes. And, and, and this, this is not just team of people who are doing it because they're ideologically motivated or because politically they're there is more and let, let me make a, let it, me right? make a quick point so okay. so uh, before these three elections that uh, you know uh, chhattisgarh madhya pradesh rajasthan uh, i have a video i, I you know i did a s screenshot video where you can see that uh, in the info and ad section on a facebook page there's an info and ad section to show what are the active ads. And I counted at one point of time some 17 ads, 17 sponsored posts. Now that is a lot of money, right? Uh, and uh, what what the parties are doing is that they are now, big, see, if, it, if, if the ad goes to BJP's official page, that would be counted by election commission. That's correct, as an advertisement which is coming from the party. Exactly, but if it is going through all these surrogate pages, then that doesn't get counted. Right, so which is why I believe that there's lots and lots of money which is being outsourced to these external Facebook pages. Which uh, I uh, so, for example, this particular f uh, page, Firak Bamuni Sarkar, in its previous avatar used to be called uh, UP Ke Man Ki Baat, and uh, the website for Bharatiya Janata Party's UP manifesto was UP Ke Man Ki Baat dot com. So uh, while I don't have a direct linkage that you know it is connected to the party, but there are enough markers to show that it is uh, closely associated with the party, you know. And uh, so, 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 and there's not just one page. For example, there's this page with Nation with Namo, which is putting out job ads on LinkedIn, clearly saying that this is an opportunity till May 2019, if you want to re get Mr. Narendra Modi re-elected. And again, uh, uh, see, every party has has uh, its. Uh, right to do its propaganda, but it's not just propaganda, there's, there's a large element of misinformation as well, right? And when, when uh, and th this is where the social media platforms come into picture. Facebook has recently announced that, you know, they're going to have an ad archive and you can report ads. But, but the whole problem is, as you rightly pointed out, whether it's election commission or Facebook, I mean, if it comes from the official sources, if you know it's the Bharti Janta Party, or if you know it's a, a, a unit of the Bharti Janta Party or the Rashtriya Swayam Sevak Sangh, you can do something. I mean, you, or you can say, yes, this is where the money has come from. What, what do you do when it's A, B, C and X, Y, Z? So that, who, who's doing it? So that is where... And, and you don't know whether X, Y, Z and, and A, B, C is being paid to do it. Corrupt uh, in in a surreptitious manner, perhaps. That is the whole problem. There is no transparency. Uh, you know, I have I have and I have made this point multiple times. For example, recently, uh, you know, when BBC had this whole fake news thing, and you know, there was a panel of Facebook, etc. And I brought up the case of this specific page, and I said, you know, there's so much money going in. Why aren't this? Uh, don't the citizens deserve to know where is this money coming from? Because it is pure political propaganda. It is meant. For there's this only singular purpose of these multiple pages, which is political propaganda. Do the citizens not deserve to know where is this money coming from? Who's behind this propaganda? Who are the individuals behind this propaganda? And uh, there is very little uh, transparency from that point of view as far as Facebook is concerned. The election schedule is yet to be announced. For all you know, by the time this program is being
being watched by our viewers, the election schedule would be known. But we will expect the elections to be held sometime uh, around from the middle of April to the middle of May. What do you expect is likely to be happen? I mean, is this the so-called weaponization of WhatsApp? And WhatsApp officially says that, look, we can't do anything because we have end-to-end encryption we don't know who's putting out what and 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 uh, we don't know who's receiving what and even if whatsapp spokesperson say that most of our messaging or 90 percent of our messaging is like personal we know how these groups are being created i mean over 250 people can be part of each group and even if you can send five to five groups at a time you're still reaching 1250 odd people at a go tell me what is the kind of strategy the BJP and its supporters and its troll army and its WhatsApp battalions are planning. How do you anticipate the next few weeks? Here, I would like to clarify. So, you know, we are sitting in multiple WhatsApp groups and on both sides, Congress and BJP. And uh, there is a fair share of misinformation on both sides. Uh, but, uh, it, you know, there is a difference. Congress doesn't have that big a network. And if you look at the share of misinformation, it is definitely uh, greater, you know, in the BJP WhatsApp groups. Uh, but the strategy is, uh, which is why I was talking about these Facebook pages, that you see this content. You know, so there are people who are sitting and creating this content, which goes to multiple uh, social media networks. So, so this propaganda is actually... Uh, uh, agnostic of the platform okay the propaganda is created for every platform so what you see on facebook is the same thing that will go in uh, in the whatsapp world and uh, it's, it is just that whatsapp and facebook they are two different social the people who are on whatsapp there is a certain socio economic sector uh, whatsapp is accessed by everybody so uh, but facebook is more of lower middle class upper middle class and beyond so there is a section of population uh, a section of economic section which is not there on facebook and that is what and that is also the section which has very little literacy as far as internet goes so that is the section which which these parties are looking to target uh, you know with misinformation and, uh, and and that would include the young people who are begun their first they're going to be first time voters they're going to be recent users of whatsapp Absolutely. And and to use Ravish Kumar's famous phrase, they sort of educated in WhatsApp University. Okay. Absolutely. So, for example, uh, you know, I was with this person yesterday, and uh, right after Pulwama, there was a photo which was put out uh, claiming that Rahul Gandhi is with the Pulwama bomber. That uh, you know, there was a Photoshop picture, and we did that story. And I was sitting with this person yesterday, talking about you know, the, the work we do, and he said that I was in a taxi, and this guy told me that. You know, uh, I can understand, you know, that uh, probably, you know, the union government needs to be deserved on multiple counts. But look, this man is, has a photo with the bomber who, you know, who blew 40 of our soldiers. So that is the penetration of misinformation. And uh, even though, you know, if you look at that photo, uh, it is clearly photoshopped to my eyes. Of course, uh, you know, I will have a different perception to it. But, but generally, you know, I have seen good photoshopped images and bad photoshopped image. This was a bad, bad photoshopped image. And even then, this person who, you know, did not know how to differentiate between this and that. So, so that is the danger that uh, this, there's this huge section of population who has absolutely no uh, ability at this point of time. To distinguish between what is credible, what is yeah. genuine, what is factually correct, yes. and what is false, so, and what so is in that propaganda. Case, in that case, what will dictate is the amount of money you spend behind propaganda, the volume of propaganda that you can push. The one that pushes a greater volume of propaganda obviously has the edge. I continue my conversation with you. We have a second conversation where I will ask you to outline, give suggestions to ordinary people how they can distinguish between what is genuine and what is not. What is propaganda and what is factually correct information. If you can give some guidelines, some tips, some advice to the WhatsApp generation and we will take that conversation forward. Stay with NewsClick. We are discussing the pernicious impact of fake news of disinformation, of misinformation that is being used by people with wealth, 
with power to try and influence political opinion in the coming weeks. We'll be back with you. Keep watching News Click.